like reiterating, uh, we've moved away from Street Wraith plus Tainted Indulgence into um, into Shredder plus Bobble, focusing more on that. Still playing some number of Tainted Indulgence. It is uh, very rarely going to draw you two, but th this is mostly in here as like card filtering at instant speed and deck with lots of counter magic. Um, and obviously, I think you need a density of these kinds of effects for Merktide region. I was kind of worried on playing too few in the Merktide deck. Uh, this hand is so bad if Fatal Push isn't good against them. I think I'm going to Mulligan. Another one lander, but this one has, I think, bigger upside. Kind of a high curve, though. Let's keep it back to drown, I think. Hopefully, no Ragavan, definitely no Channeler. Two bubbles. Bubble them, bubble me, pass. All right, we we are kind of a land light deck, but you know, consider still gives us a really good chance of finding our land for turn two. There we go. Um, pretty sure we're just holding up counterspell slash indulgence. Actually, not that far away from drawing two. But still happy enough, I think, to just indulgence into turn. Consider putting lightning bolt in the yard. All right, gonna fire off the indulgence. I think I just discard dismember. It's gonna be another spell for a Merc Tide, but this turn we can go. We can either go shred or shadow, or we can just hold up permission. Maybe, I, I think drawing charm, I just want to hold up permission, uh, especially because, like, now if I, now assuming my opponent doesn't have another threat, we could potentially draw two into, like, Murktide with Counterspell up, which is pretty powerful. We could try to trade, play Shadow and, on a turn where it's not going to die to uh, Burn Spell. Bolts me, well, Death Shadow does not mind that. Then Bolting me, I think, heavily implies that they're on a Murktide Regent this turn. And so we actually have a kind of a tricky spot. How we want to counter this. I think I think that because my hand is so threat heavy, I'm supposed to go Watery Grave counter with Archmage's Charm. But it's it's certainly close. They do play a land, and untapped steam vents is the land. And now, that we, now we've drawn a charm and we're in the same spot we were last time. I think I would pass back again. I have found I have found that the Demir Shadow deck feels a little bit favored against Murktide, where like your shadows and your Murktides are kind of similar in power level. In, in the sense that like they're like both like your your their removal is just like pretty bad against your creatures, but your removal is live against their creatures, so. In that dynamic, things are pretty pretty good for you. Um, I think here I like going Shadow Murktide. We can also go Shredder Shadow, Shadow Counterspell up. I guess, sh sh I mean, Shadow still dies to Unholy Heat here if they have it. But I, I feel like on turns where you can guarantee an 8-8 Murktide, like, you just, you just like have to take it. Yeah, you just can't pass up on very many turns that you get to resolve 88 Murktide. Yeah, we could maybe go for 7-7 se uh, seven, seven here and try to delve um, the other instant sorcery away for the second Murktide in hand. They'll go Murktide next for turn. Yeah, I, I think that it's likely, but it's like kind of. But if they have like Murktide Counterspell, which is also kind of likely, it's somewhat of a wash. And I, I also like even if they do play their 88 Murktide here, I just I just have an 88 Murktide in play too, so it's not even the end of the world. Monsi with the 15 months, appreciate you. Why counter the expressive iteration and not the follow-up play? Because uh, the expressive iteration is a two for one. The follow-up play is not a two for one. That's a somewhat awkward life total. 
Yeah, land would land would definitely be nice. Counterspell. Yeah, if they have a second Murktide, things get actually pretty dicey because we have to chump lock. We're in terrible shape. Another have two cards though. They go ahead and offer the trade, which we have to take. Two cards. I guess this is for Delirium for Heat. No, not not for Delirium for Heat. Channeler, Channeler. Interesting. So if I play a Murktide, it's just a 3-3. Although here I get to go Scalding Tarn. Yeah, Scalding Tarn, attack. They can never block here. Then I get to go fetch Basic Island. Hit my opponent for 6, down to 10. 3-3 three, three Murktide with Counterspell up. And then just kill them on the backswing. So we, yeah, we should be deterministically a win here. Good game, good game. Why can't you just not block and have a 13-13 shadow? <laughs> Genius. 13-13 shadow when you're at zero life. Amazing. Uh, opponents zero cars, but this bolt also like puts them dead on board. What build do you think is better, Mardu or Rakdos Ob? Uh, I think Mardu. Oh, sorry, sorry, Rakdos. Like you're actually like pretty good at playing through graveyard hate in general. In the uh, Rakdos deck, your cards all kind of hold hold their own, you know. Okay, up a game against Smirktide. Not 100 percent sure what our sideboard plan is. I've I've you know chain cut some of the cards that I was bringing in in this matchup, largely because I found this matchup to be pretty good. I think I'm gonna go minus one dismember, minus one thoughtsies, plus two stub, click submit. Uh, I don't think the Seagate Restoration is 100% necessary, but it is pretty nice. Shout out Murtide Copium is my favorite flavor of Copium. <laughs> There's been a lot of that today. Like, oh, I hate, this. I love this deck, but boy, is it bad. <laughs> I don't know how to take those comments, but I, I like this deck. I like the deck. I'm closer to playing the, Seagate, the second Seagate Restoration, though, before I am cutting the first one. Okay, on the draw, definitely going to keep this. I do think that this matchup, though, seems to be, like, one really big reason to play this version over, like, Grixis Shadow or, or potentially Blue-Red Murktide, just because, like, I, I think Shadow gives you a really big edge in the mirror. Although the older version without Shredder, I think was probably even better against Murktide because like their removal was like just all all pretty dead. We are kind of cool to turn to Murktide, but because they didn't bin a card off consider, they you know it's not much of a concern. I know Wicked's Black to consider with Seagate as a spell is a bit more reasonable. I mean, this is a deck with Archmage's Charm counter spell, so it, it wasn't a consideration. You're also like never casting it. Like you're like like you're you're almost never gonna just spend four mana to get a shadow back. I I've played a lot of like Agadim's Awakening, or like a lot of shadow decks with Agadim's Awakening, and you I could count on one hand the number of times I've cast that card in like hundreds and hundreds of matches with it. And even when you do cast it, it's like also like not that good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So when I went downstairs and I didn't see Athena on the couch, guess where she was? Uh, outside the office. She's on the air bed. <laughs> She's on the air mattress. She was. Oh. <laughs> I, I've been. We we had some friends over and they put out an air mattress and I've been uh, napping on it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And Athena had a hard time getting on the air mattress the other day, so I'm kind of surprised she's napping on it today. Yeah, I feel like it's too high. There you go. That's, yeah, that is actually better. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, 
kind of spell the drown. So I'm pretty sure we're going to go... Well, with them having one card in hand, or just two cards, I feel, maybe, no, 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 let's go, let's go, yeah, we can just go push, hold up, counterspell, consider, and then we can go Thoughtseize into Murktide next turn, and that gets through a counterspell pretty well. Two cards in hand. Let's consider. Land would not be half bad. I think we have to graveyard counterspell. There's land, and I don't think it's half bad. My opponent keeps bolting me. <laughs> Just like bolting me into turn against the Death Shadow deck. I think they're going to bolt me again. Counterspell, Lightning Bolt. What a beautiful hand. So just take the counter spell. And then if I play two five five shadows and my opponent Merc Tides, I'm kind of in trouble, so I think I should just Merc Tide counter spell. Sorry, sorry, Merc, Merc Tide uh Shadow. And then I'm at seven, so I don't die to two bolts. Should be should just be good to go here. <laughs> yeah, Mana Traders is maybe just dishing out these counter spells today. <laughs> um, I can't really lose to anything, but I'll just pass. What would you say is the big difference between this and my former list? If we're talking about the former Blue Black Shadow list, um, I mean, the, the difference is that it's more, this version is more threat heavy playing Shredder now as opposed to just being all in on the Murktides and Shadows. That being said, I think it was fine to be. Just all in on the Murktides and Shadows, since the, the threats are so big, so capable of winning the game by themselves. Okay, pretty good 7. Maybe... Maybe if we 5-0, I'll play this tomorrow. Instead of the Rocco deck, I'm not sure. I'll sleep on it. Against Hammer Time, probably not a great matchup. I think we have to take the Sentinel. Uh, I have tried Dolphy Main before Shredder was printed. I'm not a huge fan. It is great for us that Shredder can connive on our opponent's turn here. This is also potentially a matchup that's improved by um, playing blue-black, where Fatal Push is like a lot better against Hammer Time than... Um, Fatal Push is a lot better against Hammer Time than uh, Heat and Bolt are. That being said, it's also not a glowing review <laughs> for this matchup that if we were just on the draw of this game, we would never ever win. Okay, so opponent's hand is... Hammer Time, Paradise... or Colossus Hammer, Reality Chip, Paradise Mantle, two mystery cards. They start off by fetching for a Plains and casting a Pure Steel Paladin, which I think I just need to counter so that they can't... Um, respawn draw a card after I destroy this end of turn. Or, you know, cycle their um, uh, Paradise Mantle. And I get to consider and sh and uh, connive a little bit. Pretty likely to be conniving away the Murktide, just being more in on the Shredder this game. Then... Could keep this to connive. I think that that's probably fine. I can go Bobble, Shadow, Connive. Anything helped with the matchup Hercules Recall? Uh, we have Engineered Explosives as our main sideboard card for the matchup. 
I'm not, I'm not, the matchup's not terrible either, but it is. Uh, it can be scary. Okay, so we'll just play the Shadow, connive the Thoughtseize into the yard. I think it's better than shuffling it away so we get the counter. And then fetch... Oh, sorry, sorry. I was in the I was in the ma mindset that I needed to shuffle. I needed to shuffle um, the thoughtsies away, but obviously we just uh, connived it away. We get to draw a card off the bobble. Got the drown up. Push is a great draw. Great addition to the hand. Okay, so their hand is Paradise Mantle, Reality Chip, Mystery Card. We have probably a turn two clock, maybe not quite that fast. It does kind of hurt to have to loot away a drown, but this does this does make it a two turn clock, so can't be too upset, I guess. Attack for eight. Um, oh, maybe I should have fetched shock there. Doesn't really change the clock at all, though, and I might want to connive it away if they double spell, which they're pretty likely to with Reality Ship Mantle here. Hmm. Their last card is Paradise Mantle. I think I should probably, probably drown this. Do I consider streaming my full time job or studying and working towards another career path? I definitely consider it my full time job. Uh, I also, I was pursuing other career paths before, I, I'm hoping to do this as long as I can. Okay, got game one. We're bringing the dress downs, the explosives. Um, I might actually go down to like two Murktide regents. Murktide is usually the worst threat in the matchup. Cut two Murktides, two indulgences. One thought sees, two thought sees. Maybe we could two, one counter spell, one thought sees, one counter spell. Seems kind of fine. Oh, I meant to cut two Merc Tides, sorry. I meant to cut two. I, I think I want three counter spells, three thought sees. So maybe we play three Merc Tides, maybe we play just one Indulgence. I kind of like that. Still three Merc Tide. I don't know. Merc Tide's your worst threat by a decent amount. I'm okay just playing two. Really just want to draw one. I'm playing um I'm playing Voidwalker. Why? I think Voidwalker is way better than Leyland of the Void, especially because like if there's tension between Voidwalker and Drown, you can just sack your Voidwalker. GG fine. Keep this on the draw. Put a most of six. Really, really hoping. <laughs> really, really hoping they don't have a uh, Esper Sentinel. Okay, I have successfully hoped hard enough. And I'm gonna hold the bobble to be maybe a little greedy and connive on turn two. It's probably fine. How am I liking this new version compared to the previous one? I, I think this is a an improvement over the first list. Uh, Shredder is very strong, gets you up to a good density of threats, and um, it doesn't really feel like you're really even missing out on that much by uh, by like trimming on the indulgences, cutting the street wraiths. Feels like this is just a good adjustment. Makes a lot of sense to me conceptually. Opponent with maybe an awkward mulligan over there. Yeah, I think we just get away the Merc Tide again. I do want to bubble now, so if they do trigger connive on their turn, I'm going to have the best information on what to loot away. Uh, yeah, these old border bubbles are somewhat new. I bought them kind of recently. Um, I think I want to dismember, right? So we can play Shadow. There's some, they're pretty likely to hammer in response, but that's okay. We can just effectively counter it with the push. And then... Just connive away the island. Play a 5-5 five, five Shadow, attack for 2.
It's our first time shredding in a couple days. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely, like, I think an excellent showing of, like, where <laughs> this deck shines over Blue-Red Murktide. Because this is, this is really more of a variation of um, Blue-Red Murktide, I think, than it is Grixis Shadow. Where you're, like, a black-based Murktide deck instead of a, um, a red-based one. They have no cards in their hand. We should be fine to just play Shadow. Sequencing, I guess. But the I think I think that you're better you're better against Hammer Time you're better against um, and you're better against uh, Blue Red Murktide too, which is pretty interesting to me. The main thing that ch that prompted the changes was like even though Indulgence was like is a, is a fine card in this archetype and we're still playing a couple copies. The reality is that even playing Four Street Wraith, you're just really not drawing two cards off Indulgence that often. It was less often than I expected, and so I think we're just kind of like off of this as a um, card advantage engine. We're still playing a couple of copies for selection and to flip the yard for Merktite, though. Does Shredder make Force Negation a better card to play with it? Um, I mean, you could play Shredder and Force together. I was doing so in the, the Mentor deck, but I think that Shadow decks tend to not want Force Negation. Although I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I'm not really sure what this deck is worse. Um, what deck this What deck this deck struggles? Uh, dude, they named Delta. That's so brutal. It's probably correct for them to name Delta against like the Watery Grave here, but but rough. Uh, maybe we can connive it away. But that's supposed to be two greedy instead of indulgence. I think so. Like indulgence being instant speed is like largely why it's good here. I think I want them to hit me, so I'm gonna attack. You have a favorite Ragavan deck at the moment? I've been liking the Grixis Shredder Shredder sh the Grixis Shredder Shadow deck. Um, not sure if there's any up too. I haven't been playing too many other Ragavan decks lately. They sold Delta, no their land. How did they name any other card in the universe? Oh, dude, I, I forgot that they Inquisitioned me. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot that they uh, saw the Delta. I mean, I, I thought that they. I thought the name made sense even without that info, but. I just forgot that they actually saw it with the Inquisition. Alright, Shredder gets bolted, unfortunately. I do have 0, 1, 2, 3, so I need a 7 in the yard to, um, to draw 2 off the Indulgence. We get to loot away one of our Deltas here, though. We're actually getting Max Punished, too, because actually every, every blue fetch land in this deck is exactly the same. And it, it it very very rarely comes up that uh, that you're gonna have your fetch land needled, but we are we are we could have played around it by splitting our fetches here. Probably take second shadow, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I think I'm just attacking them. If they double block, we'll we'll push the elemental token. We have separate denial of the sideboard. Um, we we have separate denial of the other version. You can main deck some copies. It's not great with Shredder though. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Okay. I'd like to find Murktide region, I think. I think I'm gonna drown the Tarmogoy for mana efficiency, say, because I probably have to use a push on push or drown on the on one of the tokens here. So I think I have to bobble myself. They're gonna fetch, but I might get some information on what to take with the I guess they only have one card, never mind. 
Our top card's a counterspell, um, so we get to push the Saga token. Oh no. Probably just losing. Do I tend to agree with Reed's modern power ranking as opposed to the CFB? I mean, I'm just a big diva and I, I tend to not agree with everything he says now. But I mean, but that's the thing about modern players though. Everybody's so opinionated that nobody agrees on anything, which is part of the fun. Definitely part of the fun. Why no push there? Why no push the construct, the the season pyromancer? All right, probably going to game two. Not even Seagate Restoration can save us. Push this even that revolt. Yeah, I would rather push the construct than push the season pyromancer. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody really knows what's going on. I agree. I think it's good that everybody disagrees and everybody's like super opinionated. They really care. They can form different different opinions based on their own experiences. I think it's for the best that nobody agrees. I think I like the cyber plan. Three dress downs. Cut the dismember. Two thought seizes. Just click submit. This is a really hard matchup to mulligan in. We have three looks at the second land. And a pretty powerful hand. I think I'm going to keep. How's the Omnath matchup? Uh, pretty bad. As expected, right? It's just like, like this is a variation of Murktide. This is like, I'm thinking of this more as like black-based Murktide than I am like as a shadow deck. And Murktide decks are bad against um, Omnath. I think we can take the spell bomb. It's kind of close. Maybe Kaito feels like a decent matchup. I don't know. Maybe. You have to test a bit more. Okay. We have three looks at a second land. Missed. Hopefully, Pona floods out. Removal spell floods out. We can catch back up, though. Sad. I feel okay about the keep. Like, mulliganing on the play against Jund is just, like, death, too. Might still win. I'm gonna go ahead and cast the Shadow, just, you know, use my mana, my very, very limited mana. So I still have this Terminate. I think I just pass here. Still need to draw a land. <laughs> Ragavan, of course, hit a land for me. All right, cycle the dress down. Yikes. I think I have to not go to discard here. The, we're gonna get hit by Ragavan again, but that's, I think, just okay. Didn't terminate end of turn. I don't know why. Okay. They wanted to use the more mana intensive engineered explosives is why. So they can cast a 4-4 Murktide region here. That is uh, nauseating. Land? Nope. They still have Terminate also. I think I'm pretty forced into Shadow Push. Dead to this next turn though. Although if they terminate this, then maybe we <laughs> maybe we have the luxury of chump blocking uh Merktide next turn, huh? Ragavan good. Well 
a little too late, or maybe way too late. Fall to two and one. Uh, I'm not sure how the Jun matchup is usually supposed to go. I think it's probably not great. You know, Jun usually does shine against the uh, against Murktide against the creature based decks. Another one lander. This one we won't keep. Put an awesome also six. We keep this six card hand on the draw against a kept six card hand. Let's put back the uh, good counter spell. Yeah, you could maybe run one more land. I think I like leading on Thoughtseize here. Okay, Jund, DRC, huh? Pretty good bolt of six they have. I think I'm taking Endurance. Yeah, sorry. I keep trying. I'm, I'm definitely. I'm just not in the habit of muting on stream. I tried to this time. What are my rankings for modern? Then, well, contrary to popular belief, like content creators are not. I'm. I'm not just able to shit out a top ten list at the drop of a hat. I would take me time sitting out, writing a full long article. You know. I need neither is read right. I can't just regurgitate. Top modern rankings. I also didn't see this week. I just know that generally I, I usually place things a little different than Reed does. So they go for Inquisition instead of the Tarmogoyf. Take the uh, take the push. Just go to pass and drown up. I'm saying this Tarmogoyf mystery card looks like they drew another discard spell. I think I have to drown the channeler in response. Which is bad if the mystery card is a land, but not the end of the world, also. Lots of good answers to Goyf in her deck. Be playing the Just Guy Fidobito supposed about CFB. I played a um, a Boros version yesterday that was a Yorion deck. <laughs> okay, they took the indulgence. Their last card is a land, but now they're hellbent after they play the Tarmogoyf. Their Tarmogoyf, I think, is a 4 5. Yeah, 4 5. Would have been defensible taking Inquisition turn one thought sees. Uh if you if you think it's defensible, could could you defend it? Because I don't know why actually you would. I think I'm gonna play the shredder here. Right, like if you play if you take Inquisition on turn one, I don't really know what I don't really know what the thinking is there. Like I think it's I think it's I think it should be the endurance where you just have Thought Seas Fatal Push for Tarmogoyf. You're okay if they're the ones spinning the mana to trade for your uh, removal spell rather than you having to be the one to trade, spend the mana to trade removal spell for card, right? Okay, we have a uh, drown for Tarmogoyf now. I'll just wait. It's game one, so no like protection spells. We're gonna play in a field for a burn, cascade, and graveyard strategies. Uh, Titan. Easy Titan. Kind of close, guy. They take the charm. I guess it makes sense. Okay, so we can connive away the Seagate Restoration. And now I guess I am looking for a land. I know I just, I know I just gave one away. Rita's hammer, death rage of Titan. I'm yeah. I'm just. I'm responding to a question about. Uh, a metagame of Cascade, Graveyard, and Burn. Titan is a Titan is usually favored against all three of those decks. I'm not talking about the specific overall power level rankings. 
we can please move on from the power ranking conversation. <laughs> Best way is to stop this conversation chat is just to ignore it. It's not. People that I know people have that attitude of that's the best way to stop it. It in my experience, the best way to, to move on is to talk about it and move on. If you just ignore it, they, the conversations keep happening. And then you, you keep taking passive psychic damage over the course of the whole stream until you're burned out and hate hate your job instead of just, you know, addressing it immediately. Yeah, yeah. And then and then you could hammer out the, you know, miscommunications too. Yeah, it, it is it is very much the advice of a lot of people to, you know, just ignore it, five head, but I I really I really think that that attitude is not very good. Um I think I'm going to give myself the ability to cast a two drop off Ragavan. Yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Which is which is why like I also like to address this stuff instead of just, you know. It's usually just like a miscommunication too, anyways, I guess. Maybe that's a good ar argument for ignoring it, huh? Well if they drew if their draws were Ragavan Lightning Bolt, it would still get a connive towards a um it would still get a connive towards a counter spell. They have free to push for for my library. Hmm. Dude, I got so nervous. I thought for sure they I thought for sure they had counterspell bolts. Or sorry, Ragavan bolt. Okay, so we get to play 6-6 six, six, Merktide, 7-7 seven, seven, Merktide. Hold this in hand to loot away. They need they need to top deck something or they're dead. They have to attack into the Merktide regent. Uh, I, I have to block so. And Holy Heat does let them trade Channeler and their Heat for the Murktide. Their hand is currently Ragavan Mystery Card. We beat. We lose to Riveteer's Charm, Lightning Bolt, Terminate. Um, we beat. Everything else? I think they drew Heat. No, if they drew Heat, they would have cast it already, right? Okay, but they should have cast it first for the surveil. They missed out on the surveil. And now we are we're the one with the Ragavan in play. They're the ones with the Ragavan in the hand. Bobble is preferred over Street Wraith since it counts as a spell for Shredder. Yes, that's why. I really don't think you want to play more than just four. I think that you kind of get uh, more of a tendency to get mana flooded, mana screwed. When you play a uh, different ratio. Okay, I know my opponent's last hand is Ragavan. I could counter this or counter the Ragavan. It doesn't matter. Uh, either either line is a win. So I'm just going to take the line that is a faster win. Okay, so we lost to John last round, but that round we did lose game one. This time we won game one. Um, I think both times it was Saga too. So listening to the seven months, appreciate ya. Uh, I do want the dress downs up against the Ragavan, or against the, uh, I think I'm just going to sideboard the same way. Minus two thoughts, he's minus one dismember, plus three dress down. To get Saga, Tarmogoyf. <laughs> I'm out of the modern loop, I'm seeing dress downs, sideboard everywhere, what is that for? Uh, so, so, dress downs are good in a lot of matchups, they're a really versatile sideboard card. They're good against every Urza Saga deck, as they kill the Construct tokens. They're good against, um, Primeval Titan, Cultivator Colossus out of the Titan deck. Um... They're good against any tribal deck. They help decks like this answer Sanctifier in Vec. It's coming a lot. Very flexible card, yeah. Good against Elementals, too. What's Kaito for? Does not come in here? It's for Blue-White Control specifically. Blue-White Control is a bad matchup, and Kaito's... A specifically good card there. I, you know, this is something we've been kind of clowning on all week, and I, I think it's 
kind of good to kind of kind of good to you know reiterate that uh, uh, ha- having having sideboard cards that are in your sideboard card in a sideboard for grindy matchups I don't think is very good deck building I think that that style of deck building was better back when back when like one like one like Pia and Kieran Nalar was like very good against John mid John John mid range and blue eye control. These decks were both really popular and it made a lot of sense to like have like a random four drop for those kinds of matchups. But like right now, like the deck decks like Murktide and decks like Blue White Control and decks like Four Color Omnath, n- none of these strategies are really weak to the same things. There's not like a very big overlap in what these strategies are weak to. So like I think maintaining like that same attitude of oh this is my card for the grindy matchup I think it is an outdated uh, thinking for building sideboards and building decks in general and should kind of just be phased out. <laughs> uh, the changes have felt pretty good. The league's been going pretty smoothly so far. I okay to indulge for four consider. We're all, we're also we're playing shredders and um, bobbles over street wraiths and dress downs. Does that include Emrakul's in sideboard? Um, not if you're talking about Emrakul the Promised in that's popping up in the sideboard of modern decks. Emrakul the Promised in is not for grindy matchups. It's for specifically four color Omnath and blue white control. Which shadow list is the best one, in my opinion? I think it's this one at the moment, although... I, I, the Grixis one I've been playing has been pretty good, too. There's a Pithy Needle for triggered abilities. You think you'll see Cyborg play in Modern. Um... Maybe. You think a couple of spell pierce could be an option? I think I would play stubborn denial instead of spell pierce, but it, it is an option, yeah. I was kind of thinking about cutting counter spell number four or the tainted indulgences for main deck. Uh, stubborn denials, like playing like the perfect amount of interaction is always like so so tricky. Um, I could dress down right now, but I think I prefer to dress down in my inst and their instep here. Obviously, this is kind of risky if they just have like removal spell for shadow, but shadow does dodge a lot of removal here, and this is going to stop them from making a saga token. And it's gonna no, I guess they could so they could make a saga token after the dress down gets sacked. Hmm. What, Snapcasting the Shell? I'm sorry, Snapcaster's just not that good. I wish that it wasn't the case, I promise. So they're not going for a token end of turn. Kinda weird, I feel like just getting a basic and making a token is pretty free. Maybe they just have lethal. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we need to send all the like sweet hero cards that aren't that good anymore to retirement home. <laughs> I agree. Like, not that Snapcaster Mage is completely unplayable, but like Snapcaster Mage has never been good in in Shadow decks in general. Like, I I know that like old school Grixis Shadow played Snapcaster. Snapcaster was Snapcaster and Seraph Visions were the worst cards in those lists. I felt. I always felt like I hated how mana inefficient snapcaster mage was in those old school grixis shadow lists and like you had to play it because like there weren't that many good blue cards there weren't like that many good cards in the archetype like it was just kind of a format staple but it, it wasn't in my opinion a format staple that fit very well um as opposed to as opposed to how like snapcaster fit mage fit like way better into like harder control decks but now you have like tons of good options and i think you should be pretty happy you don't have to play uh, Snapcaster in these decks anymore. So Modern Without Horizons. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a bit deeper than that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, like, I, 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 you, if, assuming, like, Modern Horizons were, were legal, I still would very unlikely be playing Snapcaster and Grixis Shadow. Probably be playing Ledger Shredder instead. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's some good blue-white builds with Snapcaster Mage that I think are good. <laughs> yeah, I, I would play Sprite Dragon over Snapcaster Mage, too, in this, or, or, you know... Ledger Shredder in this archetype, assuming we're just like time traveling back three years. Uh, I can keep this hand. Probably playing against uh, Blue Red Merc Tide with the very powerful and very correct to play Fiery Islet. I'm gonna go bubble myself. See a shadow on top, which I definitely want to draw. I'll also bubble my opponent. See a Spire Bluff Canal. It can be a very painful start, but <laughs> it is going to be, I think, turn one Dismember into Thoughtseize Shadow. Fetch Shock Thoughtseize Shadow. So that's uh, out of Bolt range. I guess I can just Thoughtseize first. Counterspell Murktide Regent. So we'll just take the Murktide and play the Shadow before they can Counterspell it. They don't have Delirium for Heat, doesn't die to Bolt. And, and this is a big part of why I like this deck, is, is this matchup where your your threats are mostly Shadow, Shadow Murktide, so you get to be pretty resilient to counter magic, at least in theory, right? We'll try to find another fetch land here. Graveyard. Hmm. Maybe they counter this. Graveyard. Fail to find a land. Sack the powerful islet. If they block and bolt this, I guess it's okay. I really like your anvil deck with the new set. Would I put body dropper or forge boss in it? Uh, neither of those cards are very much on my radar. And I guess I'm not sure if you're talking about the pioneer anvil or modern anvil deck. No, I'm not, Body Dropper is not a card that I think is very competitive. And... No, yeah, yeah you, you can't have cards like this that, like, say, what, that trigger whatever you sacrifice another creature. It's like, I think... May, Mayhem Devil is kind of, like, an exception to this rule, but for the most part, like, you need these cards to, like, be doing the sacrificing themselves, if that makes sense. Okay, so I can push this to not die to bolt. Hit them over the course of two turns. Uh, we still know that they've got counter spells. So we need to main phase this. Another counter spell. Yeah, I, mean, I think Mayhem Devil is kind of the exception to that general rule, but like th these cards, at the very least, are not so powerful that they uh, compensate. I think. Uh oh. Okay, hopefully we could draw a land and just steal back, I guess. Dang it. So even if I make a big Murktide here, my opponent is just going to be able to grow their shadow and kill and make me chump block. So I think I have to just try to consider and to push. Dang, that was like 10 looks at a third land or something. Like eight looks, three considers, two draw steps. No, the bobble too, like nine like nine ish looks, something something around around that. Feels not very good. But I did like the suburb plan of one dismember, one thought sees for two stubs. But Hearst of the Dothies. I think Dothies better than Hearst because it's also like good against Tron and Titan, where Hearst isn't. I do I do I'm kind of interested in cutting like Second Tainted Indulgence for 18th Land. White Nerdy Theme with 8 months. Thanks for the Rocco deck. Yeah, that one's awesome. Could Dress Downs go to the main deck for the Indulgence? I don't think so because you're only in 17 Land. You kind of need the Indulgence to draw like a little bit deeper. But I, I think I'm kind of interested in like second Seagate Restoration as the...
as land number 18 and then maybe you just play one indulgence maybe maybe you do like three maybe maybe you cut the fourth counter spell too kind of down to cut the fourth counter spell probably sideboard it yeah Do Dothy's also I think a bit better against um Tomashi combo too Jen loss is also due to the mana problems yeah yeah I think it makes sense Is this deck any good? It seems so clean. I'm, I've been liking the deck, yeah. I've been liking it. Okay, keep this. I think that Shredder or Indulgence would have a home in the Esper variant of Shadow or not worth playing without the Murktide. Um, I think I think that you mostly want to be playing Murktide alongside the Indulgence. And it's also like the main reason to play Esper is Ranger Captains. And like Ranger Captain and Murktide don't play super well together. Um, you might want to play Shredder, like Shredder Shredder plus Shredder in a Esper Shadow deck with Ranger Captain and Unearth is probably fine. Um, I think I have to graveyard this, it's kind of bad into a bolt right now. Spiral is necessary for work automation. It could be used substitute for iteration. Spiral, you, you don't want to substitute iteration for spiral in that deck, no. Like, you already have so much card draw with like four Deluge, four Typhoon. It's not like you're like, like, more card draw is not what that deck is hungry for. Um, I kind of like just main phase steal a. Channeler, it's obviously really bad if they have one mana. Counterspell. Bolt their own channeler in response deal. Bid for the 21 months. Do Enduring Ideal deck techs cost the same or more? <laughs> uh, enduring Ideal deck techs are banned. <laughs> or I'll give you a free Enduring Ideal deck tech. Uh, <laughs> cut the Enduring Ideals. I just I just can't stand the card. It's just like seven seven mana to like not even win the game. <laughs> it's just seven mana, cross your fingers and pray. <laughs> and then never get not and then also never get to cast another spell the rest of the game. It's just <laughs> I just hate the card so much. <laughs> Mercy, I think of the tier one, appreciate you. There's just like no, there's no seven mana spell that's been cast in modern that is just like so good at losing you the game, <laughs> like enduring ideal. I think we're taking an L here. <laughs> channel, yeah, channel lands were actually a huge buff to enduring ideal as you get to. Uh, we're using counter spell here as you get to. Uh, <laughs> do anything ever. <laughs> Alright, we lose. Kind of a weird league, right? We beat Murktide, beat Hammer Time, started off super hot, lost to Jun Saga, beat Jun Saga, beat Murktide for like a very, very fair and balanced 3 2. Uh, I am interested in, I think, going minus one counter spell plus one Seagate restoration and maybe playing the fourth counter spell on the board. Maybe not. But I think I'm going to call the stream early today it's pretty rough to co-stream the uh the uh